secrets. The next couple minutes, I'm going to go through nine secrets with a bonus 10th one. Stay on to the end because the bonus number 10 secret, TJ Real Leader says it helped him make $100 million. So you might want to stay on. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Number one is I have nine secrets of writing a sales copy and copywriting for digital products. The thing is, is that it's a little bit different writing for digital than it is other things. You have a lot of commonalities, but you have some differences. So let's jump in. Number one, the bread and butter headline is typically the big promise. <clears throat> now, Dan Kennedy is a fan of the problem solution, and the problem solution headline is a good one. If you're really good at problem agitate solve formula, then you can use a problem solution headline. Now, I'm very much aware of direct leads by Michael Masterson, where he spells out the different, I think, nine different types of leads or six different types of leads, when to use which one. And he's right. He's correct. But I can tell you that in digital products, typically, the people who are finding your sales page for digital products, they normally respond to a big, fat, juicy promise. Now, not always, but that's my go-to. In other words, there are other types of leads. And if one type of lead doesn't work, you certainly need to try out other types of leads. Sometimes I'll try out a number of different headlines like I've currently done for my product, Push Button Views. Uh, dot com forward slash go. Now, number two, you probably want to write these down. The bullet points are powerful, but here's why. People don't understand bullet points. There's very few people today that write them very well. Bullet points arouse curiosity, and most people don't know or realize this. Curiosity is a super powerful motivator. You may have read what's called a blind ad before. The blind ad sells you something, but you don't actually know what it is you're buying. I have a product at resellertoolkit.com forward slash strange ritual. That's a blind ad. It's a strange ritual I do every morning that makes me money, right? And that's called a blind ad. The reason blind ad works is because they typically go to newbies and they arouse the curiosity and they eliminate objections. People can't say, oh, this won't work for me because it's this or this or this or that or the other because they don't know what the heck it is. So never underestimate the power of curiosity. Now, if you want to read some great bullet points, some of my sales letters have some really, really uh, powerful and great bullet points. So you can read my letters at resellertoolkit.com for slash kitchen sink. That's my kitchen sink page with a bunch of my offers on it. But I'll tell you who writes uh, pro some of the best bullet points today is Ben Settle. Obviously, uh, uh, John Carlton, he's one of the probably the best bullet point writers ever. If you haven't bought his courses, I do recommend them. Uh, ben Settle sends out an email every day. And when Ben's really serious about selling something, he doesn't do it every day. But when he's really serious about selling something, he will have drop dead killer awesome bullet points in the email. The email will be packed with bullet points. You, 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 Virtually no one does this today. Virtually no one. I do it and I forgot about doing it until I was reading Ben's emails and I'm like, yes, he's right. Bullet points are so powerful. I made an awful lot of sales and money off of bullet points. And it's because of curiosity is a major driver of human behavior. Even today, with all the flood of information and YouTube and everything else, I dare you to read Ben Settle email with all the bullet points in it and not want to respond and not want to know them. I dare you to do that. Hopefully, you feel that way when you read some of the bullet points in my sales pages also. Number three, specificity matters. And um, sometimes you, I don't always nail this in my headlines, but some of my headlines, like I have a headline for a product called Inner Sanctum. It's on the kitchen sink page. I have, the kitchen sink page should be in the description also. Uh, the, the headline for Inner Sanctum is a really powerful specificity type headline. Numbers, odd numbers. Now I like my for push button views. One of the the uh, 
the headlines that I used was who else? I mean, it's a really old formulaic headline, but it's who else wants to get up to 42 or 43,000 opt-ins. I said up to because I had a case study. One of the, the bonuses is a case study of a girl who got 42 or 43,000 opt-ins sucking them off of YouTube, right? So I use that headline, and but that's not as powerful as 43,291, you know, or something like that. The, the more, the greater specificity, the better. I do this a lot. If you read my headlines, you'll see I do it a lot. All right. The reason is, is because it creates credibility. People feel if it's a highly specific number, you can't just be uh, making, making it up, right? All right. Number four, match the language to the audience and I'm kind of embarrassed about this. And when I was young and attempting to learn to write sales copy, you know, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have much education. So my dad had this TV repair business and um, he would repair TVs for hotels and motels. He needed a brochure. He didn't have a brochure. So I wrote a brochure with the headline, I double dog dare you to something or the other. Well, you know, I mean, to hotel people, this was not a great headline. You got to take, it take me forever and I still probably screw it up sometimes. You got to learn to to tailor your words, your concepts, your ideas, your promise, your claims to whoever your target audience is, your target buyer, your avatar, whoever you, you whatever you want to call them, right? Whatever you want to call them, you got to learn to, you got to learn to tailor it. Now, I'll send out a double dog dare to my email list because they know how crazy I am. It's a little bit different there because that's my warm audience. All right, number five, AIDI works. Now, AIDI by itself is the worst copywriting formula in the history of the world. When I was trying to learn to write sales letters, the only formula out there was AID, attention, interest, desire, action. Nobody ever told you how to get attention interest, desire, or action. Oh, you know, you say I-D-I, dog. I mean, it was terrible. It was horrible. But once you understand how to flesh out a sales letter, how to put the pieces together, how to make it all work correctly, then I feel AIDA is a super powerful uh, sales copy formula. Attention, that's the big promise or the problem that you're going to solve, right? Again, you can insert in there the other lead formulas from Michael Masterson, but all right. Now, attention, interest. This is where you describe the problem or the opportunity. Now, a lot of people who are problem agitate solve marketers, they're not very good at marketing opportunities. Like, let's say you go to an Amway meeting. They don't go up there on the whiteboard and and talk about the problems with building a home-based business because the people don't even know they want a home-based business. They're selling an opportunity, so they draw circles. Now, if, if you start this business and you make a thousand a month, and then you get six other people, just six other people who do that and go what we call direct, and they get their six and they get their six, you're a millionaire or whatever, right? Um, it's the opportunity, so it's not just about solving problems. Sometimes you're, you're, you're selling an opportunity or what Russell Brunson, Dan Kennedy originally said it, the new opportunity, the new opportunity. Russell feels everything's a new opportunity or should be, right? So uh, attention, interest, that's the problem or the opportunity you're going to help people solve. Spell out the problems, talk about the opportunity, how huge the opportunity is, how incredible it is, how blue ocean the market is, blah, blah, blah. Now, uh, attention, interest, desire. This is your solution, right? Now, typically the solution has two parts. I learned this from Robert Plank and it's a good point. Robert used to do these webinars every week and he had a really great product. I think he still sells at Webinar Crusher. I think it's a really great product, really fantastic, fabulous product about webinars. So anyway, Robert said, before you go into the offer and your offer stack of the details of what they're going to get, you want to present your big picture solution. Like, this is what the product is. This is who it's for. This is what it does. 
This is the benefit of it. And a lot of times, even before that, in his webinars, Robert would paint a picture of the entire big picture solution. So there's four steps you need to solve these problems that we've talked about. Again, attention, beginning of the webinar, problem. These are the problems people have you're going to solve. The interest, the, this is the big picture solution. It has four steps. Step number one, blah, blah, blah. Step number two, blah, 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 blah. Step number three, blah, blah, blah. And step number four, blah, 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 blah. That's the big picture solution. Now we're proud to, and if you need help with this, you want my help with it, we're proud to announce the ultimate blah, blah, blah solution. And here's what it's going to help walk you through these four steps. It's going to help you blah, 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 and get these benefits. Now let's walk through the modules. In module number one, which is what you talked about in the big picture solution, here's what you're, where you're going to learn. And, you know, you break, break it down module by module by module. So that's how he taught uh, webinars. And it was really effective. He and Lance sold, you know, I think uh, multiple millions of dollars using that, that webinar formula. So AIDA works. It works in emails. They found out in emails and they found out on social media posts that if you use AIDA, you get more response. Is it, it the formula actually works. It's just that like if you're trying to write a long form sales letter, you need to be able to break it down more than just AIDA. There's more steps involved, right? Now, number seven, I learned from Bob Serling. If you make a big, fat, juicy promise in your headline that stretches credibility, then right up front at the top of the letter, put your credibility. Bob would often put a testimonial right under the headline as proof. Because Bob would have really strong, powerful promises that would stretch the limits of credibility. So he would need one or two or three bullet point uh, testimonials right there, right under the headline. Now, when I wrote Amazing Formula, I used a Bob that Bob Serling method, but I did a little bit different. I had my first sentence. You know, the the, the headline is made for it sells products like crazy, your products are like crazy, trip your money back. They said, dear friend, if you want to sell your products by the hundreds or thousands, listen, listen up. It's really hard to know who to believe today because there's so many conflicting claims. So you're probably wondering why listen to me. Well, here's why. And I gave him four reasons to listen to me. I gave him my best proof up front because I made a really strong, powerful claim. Now, number eight, the price and bargain appeal. Now, uh, if you haven't read John Capel's Tested Advertising Methods, he has three books, Making Ads Pay, Making Your Advertising Make Money, and te a Tested Advertising Methods. Uh, uh, tested Advertising Methods is probably the best, but the other two are fantastic books. But I learned this from uh, John Capel's because he always called it the price of the bargain appeal. You you explain to people why the price is a bargain. Now, there's a million ways you can make it sound like a bargain, but it's like when you go to, when you go to the flea market and they're telling you how valuable the thing is there, right? Or you're buying a blender at the fair and the guy's building up the value, right? So there's a lot. Dan Kennedy's favorite way was what he called apples to oranges. You compare it to something much more expensive. So a lot of, you know, for example, you're selling a in, digital information product. You say, you know, I charge a thousand dollars an hour for my consulting, which is what I personally charge. But so arguably there's ten thousand dollars of my my personal time invested into this product. But obviously I'm not going to charge you ten thousand dollars for it today. Blah blah, and you do your price drop. But there's a lot of different ways you can prove that your price is a bargain. However you do it is the right way. But you want to show people that the price they're getting is a real bargain, right? Because everybody wants to feel like they're getting a bargain. No one really wants to feel like, you know, they're, they're getting screwed. All right. So the price, the bargain appeal, typically a price drop. Uh, point number nine is that, again, another John Capels. One of the most tested, proven ways to begin your sales letter is just to expand on the headline. If the headline's a big promise, expand on the big promise. If the headline's a problem solution, then you're going to do problem, agitate, solve, right? I typically do big promise headlines 
because of my audience and market is largely warm. I market through affiliates. I market to my own customer list, so they're warm, so I use a big promise. Therefore, most of my, my first sentences and paragraphs are an expansion of the big promise. I simply expand on it. It's like for push button views, I, the, the original letter, the, I wrote several multiple leads for it, but the original lead was like, uh, if you want to get views, opt-ins, and sales from your YouTube videos, it's just this simple. It, it was like number one, number two, number three, right? So expand on the big promise in the headline. Again, if you haven't read Tested Advertising Methods, it's great. Now, Making Ads Pay was a second, another book by John Cable's book, number two. And that one told his stories, his background stories, stories of him working at the, the agency, writing copy, how he learned to write copy. It's a fascinating book with some really great lessons in it. Most, very few people have read it. And his third book is making, I think, making your advertising make money. It's a big, thick one. Uh, there's some real gems in it also. I found making ads pay was much more endearing and that you love reading the personal stories about John freaking Caples that you never knew, right? A test of advertising methods uh, is pro probably has more great tips in it, but there's some great stuff in making your advertising uh, make money also. So a lot of people skip, uh, you know, a lot of people skip studying the, 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 the basics of copy. They've never read the Gary Halbert newsletters. They've never read the John Capels letters. They've never read the Vic, Vic Swab book, How to Write a Good Advertisement. You know, I think that's a mistake because it's like, Someone, I think Alex Hermosi said that scaling is just doing the fundamentals at scale. And if you never learn the fundamentals, you're gonna things are gonna fall apart when you start to scale. I'm gonna give you an example today. Everybody and their dog is selling uh, how to get you know appointments for coaching and how to sell coaching. Like everybody, it's nonstop blitz of Facebook ads, all with the same basic promise just a different mechanism in order to do it. And they're all selling a big ticket. Now, why is this? Well, the reason is they never learned the basics of entrepreneurship. The basics of entrepreneurship is this, 101, entrepreneurship 101, copywriting 101, <clears throat> find a problem and solve it. Find an opportunity and help people to take advantage. And all everyone knows is to copy what everybody else is doing. They don't know how to find their own problem to solve or create, find another opportunity to help people take advantage of. If they did, everybody wouldn't be running the same type of ads for the same service over and over and over again, relentlessly. So copywriting 101, find a problem and solve it find an opportunity and help people take advantage of it. That's it right there in a nutshell. Now, what we talked about the bargain appeal and Dan Kennedy in his book on no BS selling or sales, <clears throat> great book. Dan Kennedy set, has a chapter in there that will stick with you for a lifetime. And the, the chapter is about selling money at a discount. He's like, if you can sell money at a discount, it's much easier to sell, which means that if you can sell people something that's going to save or make them $100, you're only charging them $10 or $5 for it, that's money at a discount. They're getting $100. They only had to spend 5 to get it. Now, you can't do this with, it's hard to do this with soft topics like self-development or law of attraction and those kinds of things. But it's just one of the ways that you create a bargain appeal. Now, if you're selling self-development, you got to create a bargain appeal another way. I'll give you an example is there's a hypnotist that Joe Vitale's friends with, and he often sells his hypnosis audios. <clears throat> and he will sell like a whole bundle of these hypnosis audios, and you feel like you're getting the greatest bargain in the history of the world. 
I mean, it's they're amazing offers. They're just amazing. And he's been doing it for many years, a long, long, long time, right? But you really feel like that, man, I'm just getting a real bargain here. And Joe will do that sometime also. He will he will have a premium price program and he'll send out an offer for it that will just be so good. You're like, wow. This thing, this thing is spectacular. And I, I attempt to do that on my bonuses. Like I have, I have 12 bonuses, I think, for push butt views. I will pile on or stack on bonuses just to create that feeling, that bargain appeal that, wow, I'm really getting a bargain here. I'm getting all 12 of these bonuses. I've done as many as like 30, which is insane. I mean, it's crazy. And if everybody did it, it wouldn't work. It kind of harks back to the old days of butterfly marketing for, for those of you are old geezers like me and remember it, <laughs> Mike would have this OTO that would, would just sell you this whole truckload of stuff for a hundred bucks or something, right? It was irresistible. You're like, wow, I'm going to get all of this stuff for a hundred bucks. You got to be kidding me, right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and recap. The bread and butter headline is the big promise or the problem solution. Number two, the bullet points are powerful because of curiosity. <clears throat> Probably the best bullet point writer in the world is maybe uh, John Carlton. Ben Settle writes incredible uh, bullet points also. Number three, specificity matters. <clears throat> Excuse me. Specificity matters. So you want to use, whenever possible, highly specific numbers in your headline and in your sales. So I tell you who does this really well on YouTube videos is Neil Patel. If you go to Neil Patel's YouTube channel and you listen to one of his videos, <clears throat> excuse me, within the first two minutes, Neil will be quoting facts and statistics that are highly specific. He does it every single freaking video so you know he's tested it. Number four, match the language to the audience. Don't say double dog dare to hotel owners, right? Number five, AIDA, AIDA works. It works in emails. It works all over the place. But when you're writing, writing long-form sales copy, I teach a 12-step copywriting formula. I taught it around the world in 120 seminars. <clears throat> you need a longer formula, but still. Attention, the big promise. Uh, interest, the problem or opportunity. A problem you're going to solve or opportunity you're going to help them take advantage of solution in two parts. Number one, the big picture solution. Number two, the offer stack. Uh, and then action, the call to action, right? Uh, number seven, put proof early on if you have a really big, gigantic promise that stretches believability. Number eight, when you give your price, condition it. It's called price conditioning. Condition it with a bargain appeal. Another approach to price is to use what's called contrast. Contrast is another form of creating a bargain appeal. Contrast, you have an AB or ABC offer. An AB offer is I have this high end one that includes my coaching. It's $2,000, or you can buy the digital product version for $100. We created a contrast there and made the $100 seem like a bargain. An ABC offer is A is the bare bones. B is what you really probably are going to sell. That's the deluxe offer. And then the platinum offer, you jack up the price. A lot of times you don't even want to sell the platinum offer. It's just there to do what Lee McIntyre used to call price stretching, right? It's the law of contrast if you've read Cialdini's book. And then um, number nine, the first paragraph typically expands on the headline. Now, John Caples teaches like 10 methods for the first paragraph. He's like, make a shocking statement quote a fact or statistic. He has like 10 methods for your first paragraph. But the, the first paragraph that always worked for me was expand on the headline. And the, the single best first sentence for me was always the Gary Halbert sentence. Uh, uh, dear friend, if you want to A, B, and C, uh, uh, then this might be the most important letter you'll read all year, right? It's the old Gary Halbert opening. And when you execute that with still skill, it still works. It's a heck of a first sentence. It's a really, really, really powerful. You want to solve problem A, problem B, problem C. This might be the most important letter you'll read all year. You're, you're like, why? Because that, that builds up the importance of reading the letter, right? So super powerful uh, first sentence. Now, 
Number 10 is the TJ Rowleader $100 million method. I promised that if you stayed on to the end, I'd tell you the $100 million method. So TJ Rowleader wrote a book call, uh, on uh, 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 his copywriting book, but <clears throat> the one I like by him is a compilation of other books plus additional things that he wrote in. It's called How to Make Millions Sitting on Your Assets. And um, in that in that book, he explains this $100 million method, and it's this. You don't write a letter beginning to end. TJ does not start out, write the headline, write the opening, then this, like this. He doesn't write like that. TJ just writes, writes for like an hour every day, just write. And he writes two, three, four. He learned this from Rush von Holscher. Hired Rush von Holscher to be a consultant. Paid him a lot of money at the time because TJ was broke. Rush von Holscher, if you don't know him, he's an old school guy. Rush von Holscher comes down, literally goes to the kitchen table with TJ Rowley to help him write his, to write sales copy for his product. So says, TJ. Fire up a fire up a pot of coffee. TJ goes, fires up a pot of coffee. They both get their coffee. And Russell starts to write. <clears throat> goes through about three or four cups of coffee. And he writes, and he writes, and he writes, and he writes, and he writes. No particular order. He goes, oh, here's one. Here's a bullet point. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, here's... This is a good paragraph here. Let me write this out. But he just writes. He just, he doesn't edit any of it. He just writes in no particular order. He just writes two, three, four, five times what he needs. Then Russ taught him later on, you let it sit. You let it sit. You let it sit. Then later on, you go back. <clears throat> That's when you piece it together in order. That's when you edit, right? That's when, so you go back and, and I think, I can't remember, I think TJ said he would actually cut parts of the letter out and put them in, tape them up in order, right, back then. Uh, but however you do it, you can go back and then edit out the stuff, cross out the stuff you don't want, make error, you know, however you do it, piece that thing together. TJ would do this at night while watching TV with his wife. Literally, that's how he would make money sitting on his assets. And he would edit those letters. And TJ had edited a letter sometimes for two weeks, but he'd write it out all write it out without editing at all, right? Two, three, four, five times the copy needs. That is a hundred million dollars Celsius. TJ sold over a hundred million dollars by direct mail. It's his hundred million dollar copy secret. His book. It's one of the best ever written about this business, but people don't recommend it because, you know, TJ's in the business opportunity market and just sell stuff that's over the top sometimes. That's the business opportunity market. They want to buy something new, crazy, exciting, breakthrough, ground floor, all those cliches, <clears throat> right? It's like all the cliches that are on the FTCs do not say this in copy. TJ says all of them. But he's very careful about uh, legal points. <clears throat> All right. So that's it. That's the $100 million formula. And now TJ has other books. I recommend you get his other books also, right? I recommend it. I've read all of his books. Let's see. We have a chat here. Let's see who commented today. Video 1T. All right. He says, hi. Well, hi, how are you doing? Hope you got value today. If you're still watching, you're from LinkedIn. Thank you for joining us today. I do appreciate it. Uh, I love writing sales copy. And I'll tell you what, you will get a legal pad. Now you can write on your laptop if you really love doing that. I like to write on paper. <clears throat> and if you will just start writing and not edit it, don't worry about the order it's in. Write and write and write and write and write. Get your cup of pot of coffee and suck down two, three, four cups while you're writing, right? You might you might be surprised that you write a lot better copy. Go back and edit it later. If you actually try out this method, uh, you might you might love it. 
So uh, that's what I've got for you today. If you haven't read the books by John Caples, you haven't read the Vic Swab book, How to Write a Good Advertisement. Uh, you haven't read Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Swartz. You haven't read some of TJ book, TJ's books. Uh, I think you'll, you'll love all of them. You'll get a lot of value from them. It'll help you be a lot better copywriter. It'll help you write copy for digital products and make a lot of sales and make a lot of money. I've sold over 70,000 products online. If you listen this far, then you should get my freebie because what you seek seeks you. The kind of person you seek is seeking you. And we're, we're simpatico. We're on the same wavelength. You can get my freebie at uh, marlinsnews.com for 70K. That's in description. It's how I sold, sold 70,000 plus products online. Do appreciate you watching today. I do have playlists on writing sales copy. So if you just uh, go on the menu, you should see playlist. And I also have some playlists in the description below, and you can uh, kind of binge watch some of the other videos that I've done about sales copy. Thank you for joining me today. I will be back tomorrow.